live from Overton Stadium on the campus of the University School of Jackson. Broad, um, here we go again. <laughs> Ball Game Blitz Sports Network, powered by Worthy Road Studios, proudly presents USJ Bruins Baseball. And today it is Senior Day as the Bruins take on their neighbors, Sacred Hearts Knights. And you see a group of family members coming onto the field, and that's because they are going to be honored as parents by the seniors on this ball club. There are eight of them who have come out onto the field, and we wanted to bring you the pregame ceremonies as they are going to be recognized for their contributions, not just as athletes, but as student athletes at University School of Jackson, and it is so good to be able to see them have this opportunity, and it's an emotional time for the parents, too, and all of the other family members as they see uh, the reward for so many years that they put in in practices and the games that have been played and many different times. There are so many different elements that go along with this, and let's hear Senior Appreciation Day right now. throughout his high school career and was on the golf team. Nolan is a member of the National Art Honor Society. This fall, Nolan will attend the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, where he will begin studying. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nolan Foster. Our next senior is Mr. Chase Gardner. Chase is the son of Cody and Anna Kayla. Chase was a five-year baseball team member, an all-region and all-district player his junior year. This fall, he plans to attend Middle Tennessee State University. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chase Gardner. Our next senior is Mr. Brooks Jones. Brooks is the son of Craig and Jennifer Jones. Brooks is a member of Fellowship Bible Church, a four-year varsity baseball starter, and a three-year member of the football team. This fall, Brooks will be attending Mississippi State University to major in agribusiness. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brooks Jones. Next up, we have Mr. Rory Jones. Rory is the son of Shannon and Travis Jones. Rory is a four-year member of the USJ football team, a four-year member of the baseball team, and will attend Mississippi State University in the fall, majoring in construction management. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rory Jones. next senior is Mr. Berkeley Pettigrew. <laughs> Berk is the son of Kyle and Sarah Pettigrew. Berkeley is a four-year member of the football and baseball teams, a member of the USJ Honor Council, and this fall will attend the University of Mississippi. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Berkeley Pettigrew. Next up, we have Mr. Maddox Rabin. <laughs> Maddox is the son of Heath and Ashley Rabin. Maddox was a four-year member of the USJ football team, a five-year member of the USJ baseball team, and this fall will be attending the University of Arkansas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Maddox Rabin. Next up is Mr. Kurt Sammons. <laughs> Kurt is the son of Jason and Jennifer Sammons. Kurt is a five-year member of the baseball team, a member of Young Life, 
and this fall will be attending Ole Miss. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kurt Sanders. Our final senior is Mr. Jackson Sills. Jackson is the son of Eric and Regina Sills. Jackson was a four-year member of the baseball team, a two-year member of the football team. This fall, he plans to attend UT Chattanooga and major in computer software design. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jackson Sills. And how about that? What a, what a marvelous opportunity to say thank you and congratulations and also for these parents. It has to be an emotional time as their seniors are recognized, eight of them, on this USJ Bruins team. And I know that everybody in their families, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, close friends, everyone, siblings, are all proud of what these young men have accomplished, and we're certainly proud to be a part of it right here. And their coaches are coming out to join in a joint picture with the seniors. And you heard the descriptions of where so many of these young men are going to major universities, and they're going to major in elements that will provide them with careers that will hopefully bring them into leadership positions in the future. And they've already demonstrated leadership on their campuses as they have been here at University School of Jackson. And we got one final group picture that is being made and then we will shortly have USJ against Sacred Heart, their neighbors from just really walking distance down the street. And while we wait on the start of today's game, let's go take a commercial break, and then we'll be back, and we'll give you the starting lineups. Tired of going to the dealerships only to see empty spaces? Then come to Carlock Nissan of Jackson. We have over 60 new vehicles in stock and more coming in daily. You can see, feel, and of course smell that new car smell. Save up to $8,600 off MSRP on a new Nissan. Plus, special APR financing as low as 1.9%. It's all at Carlock Nissan of Jackson. You should already be here. Mention Ball Game Blitz Sports Network and receive a free gift. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime. And that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. Carlock Prestige is not your typical used car dealer. We have everything from a Porsche to a, well, to this, and this, and lots more. We inspect and repair all our vehicles. Ask us to prove it. We will. Carlock Prestige, Van Drive, Jackson. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. Fleet Feet, your locally owned source for the best shoes for school, work, running, and everyday comfort. They offer a 3D scan of your feet and professional fitting 
Fleet Feet sells the top selling brands Hoka, OnCloud, and Brooks. To add comfort to your spikes or other performance shoes, let Fleet Feet fit you for a pair of arch support inserts. Get the quality you want and the service you deserve at Fleet Feet in Jackson on Oral Well Road beside Walgreens. Dynamics Physical Therapy. We help our clients get back to doing what they love. Dynamics is now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. Are you looking to build a career? Build a career with West Tennessee's own H&M company. H&M is a leading coast-to-coast -coast industrial design and construction firm for Fortune 500 companies. Founded in Milan in 1957 and headquartered in Jackson, H&M is actively hiring in all areas of construction and engineering. Visit us at hmcompany.com to start building your career today. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime. And that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. And we are back live at Overton Stadium as USJ getting set to take on Sacred Heart. And on the mound for the Bruins is one of those eight seniors, Chase Gardner. Sacred Heart will open up at shortstop with Brody Wilson, third baseman Grant Dillon hitting second in the center field. Malachi Chavis, he's the third spot. At cleanup is 
Jacob Hancock, the first baseman. John Brooks, the catcher, hitting fifth. Hitting sixth is Bryson Vance, the pitcher. In the seventh spot is Wesley Loveless, the left fielder. Andre Bell, the right fielder, hitting eighth. And down in the ninth spot is Garrett Dillon, the second baseman. And we'll give you the Bruins starting lineup right before they come to bat this afternoon. It is a very pleasant day. We've said this several times lately. It is a perfect day for late afternoon basket, uh, baseball. Boy, some days when you switch sports, it doesn't come out the tongue right. Uh, 70 degrees is our temperature here in North Jackson. And humidity is about as low as I have ever seen it at this time of year. Only 19%. And the wind could be a factor this afternoon. It's blowing out of the west at 12 miles an hour, and we see the flag out in right field, and you could have one. If you get one up in the air out there, it could be pushing it toward right field, and you might get one out of there. And ready for the first pitch. That's high for ball one. Wilson at short, and Gardner, as Wilson takes a step out of the batter's box. No shadows on the field at this point in time. You see just a little bit from the reflectors, but nothing in the way of either the hitters or the defensive team right now. Two balls and no strikes to Wilson. Gardner threw about 28 pitches on, in Saturday's game. That was by design. They just wanted to keep his arm loose before he came in today. It was another tough one for the Bruins. They dropped one 11-7 against Chester County after rallying to tie the game midway through at 6-6 and walked him on four pitches. And that will bring up the third baseman, Grant Dillon. I know all of these parents are so extraordinarily proud of these seniors on this ball club, and that is it's just huge and emotional for all of them when it is Senior Appreciation Day. And there's a high fly ball that just barely going to get out of the infield, and it gets away from the second baseman, but he goes to second for the force out. The runner could not advance until he saw whether the ball was going to be caught, so... Uh, Wilson is tossed out, second baseman to shortstop, and Grant Dillon gets to first base on a fielder's choice. That brings up Malachi Chavis, the center fielder. That's one of the most unusual fielder's choice plays you'll ever see. He went around on that one for strike one. He was backing up, and I don't think the sun was a problem. I think he just lost control of it as he was trying to adjust his position. And here's the pitch. Right down in there for a strike two. No balls and two strikes with a runner on. So you take the outs any way you can get them. And the pitch. High fly ball. That's going to stay, I think, in fair territory. And that gets between the right fielder and the second baseman. They tried to get him at second once again with a repeat of the same play. And I don't think there was a chance they were going to get it. So that's going to drop as an infield hit. Well, it's not an infield hit per se. It was just barely out of the infield. But it's a bloop single. So that will move Dillon over to second. So you got Dillon on second, Chavis on first, and here is the first baseman, Jacob Hancock, the cleanup hitter, and that one is going right to the center fielder, takes about three steps to his left, and that is out number two. And so very quickly, that brings up John Brooks, the catcher, and if Chase can get out of this one, not really any kind of serious hits. We had a walk and, and two what you might as well have called. He had, a, he had a bloop hit out there. He's looking the runner back to second. Two men on, and that goes outside for ball one. And 
And this is a day that the Bruins certainly want to put in the W column with this being Senior Appreciation Day. And the pitch. Right down in there for strike one call. One ball, one strike. If you've never seen this part of Jackson, Tennessee, the proximity of these two schools, it's literally true. It's in walking or jogging distance. And he went around on that one for strike two. One ball and two strikes. So it's not exactly what you would call a $15 cab ride to get here. And the one-two pitch. And got him swinging for out number three. So he gets out of the inning without any damage. No runs on one hit and no errors. You had a walk and two men left on base. So your score at the end of a half inning of play, Sacred Heart nothing, and the Bruins just now coming into bat. We offer live webcasting for families. It kind of came out of when so many warriors were going overseas to war. We have learned to offer families more choices that we want to serve our families well and serve our families better. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Here's your ball game blitz sports network starting lineups for the USJ Bruins. Kurt Sammons, the left fielder, will be leading off, followed by Max Kilburn, the catcher, and Nash Kilburn, the right fielder. Cleanup spot goes to Hondo Wyatt Scott, the center fielder. Clennon Harden, the shortstop, batting fifth. Your designated hitter, Jackson Sills, is hitting sixth. Maddox Rabin, another one of the seniors, first baseman, he'll be batting seventh. Brooks Jones, the second baseman, is batting eighth. And down in the nine spot is Corbin Howard, the third baseman. And pitching but not in the hitting lineup is Chase Gardner. And on the mound for Sacred Heart is Bryson Vance taking his warm-up tosses. He's a big, lean guy. So let's see if the Bruins can get off to a strong offensive start here in inning number one. So they whip that ball around the infield, and we are about set to go. And Danny and Spencer about to take their positions in the respective third and first base boxes. Not a serious cloud anywhere in the sky this afternoon. And this is the way you like baseball here at this time of year. You get past the middle of April and you want it to have just enough warmth. It, it's still enough wind out there that you feel like there's a wind chill. Uh, if you want to call it that, the wind chill is about 65 degrees today, but... We're at 70 as this game is beginning, and here comes the left-hander, Kurt Sammons. When picking up a little bit more out there, if you, as I say, if you drive a ball deep into right field, it could be a wind-dated home run, and you'll take them any way you can get them. So here's the first pitch from Vance, and he got it right down in there for strike one call. I like the way this umpire does not give you a delayed call on his strikes. And Vance delivering one outside, staying mostly with his fastball. One ball, one strike. Mm -hmm. 
Salmon's a very patient hitter. And that one is tap foul. Goes just beyond the foul line on first base. So we got a one ball and two strike count to Kurt Salmons. And the pitch. Got him looking for a strike three. So Vance opens up with a strikeout. And here comes the catcher, Max the Athlete Kilburn, as he is known fondly around USJ circles. Boy, Max and Nash did everything they could in the Friday and Saturday outings to get some rallies started. And that one is low for a ball. Both of them are just fun to watch as they hit and also on the base paths. Big stretch in, got him on the shoulder. So Max will take first base with a hit by a pitch ball. And here's the freshman Nash Kilburn, the right fielder. And Nash can do it anyway. He, particularly Saturday, it was all over the place with what he was delivering. He had two singles. He had three RBIs and a walk. And here's the pitch. And, boy, Nash had a big lead. Max did and managed to get back to first. I think for a little bit, Max was already planning to swipe second. And he's got a solid lead over there. And he doesn't take it this time. The catcher looks back. And that one's low again. Two balls and no strikes. Earlier start time today. And glad we can do this one in the daytime. Getting back there safely. Gets that uniform a little dirty. And that shows that he is being quite active. So a 2-0 count coming from Vance, and he goes back to first again, back in very quickly and neatly. Is Max. Nash is stepping out on him and gets back in. And the pitch in. That one is a lazy ball that goes into short center field for a base hit. Got it just over the infielders, and they couldn't catch up to it, and so that puts both the Kilburns on. And here goes Hondo Scott. Now, he had a double and a single, and he was hit by a pitch ball in Saturday's game. So you know the cleanup hitter is primed to deliver particularly with two on and one out. He got around on that one. That was a nice curveball. No balls and a strike. And runners on first and second. And Vance to the wind and the pitch. And he held up on that one, a ball and a strike. Now, if they can get an advanced jump, the Kilburns are not in any way fearful of, if they get the sign, they're not fearful of trying a double steal. And the pitch. And that one's going to be sliced foul down the third baseline, and so runners have to get back. Ball and two strikes with one out. That wind's blowing a little bit harder out toward right field. And the pitch. And that one's going three-roller to the shortstop. He fires on to first, not in time, and that's going to score the run. Heads up, base running. They did get the play at second. Number 
But Max Kilburn comes all the way in from second and scores on the fielder's choice. And Wyatt Scott took second on the throw to the plate. And here comes Clennon Harden, the shortstop, and the Bruins have the one nothing lead in this game, and that's what they enjoy because they've been having to play from behind a lot in a number of games, and he takes one on the uh, just above the hip. So that's the second hit batsman of the game, and that will put two runners on. Jackson Stills, the designated hitter now, comes in with runners on first and second. And the pitch, way outside, ball one. Taking his time, waiting on the sign that he wants. And looks the runner back at second. And there's a drive into left center field, and it's going to drop in for a base hit and bring in run number two. So Jackson Sills with a hard hit ball into left center to bring in the second run. That brings in. That brings in Wyatt Scott on the single, and here comes Maddox Raven, the first baseman, as the Bruins are out to a 2-0 lead. And the pitch. And that one is going about a three-roller, and they throw to second for out number three. Shortstop came up with that one well, and so the Bruins picked up two runs on three hits. No errors. They had a couple of hit batsmen and one man left on base. And so at the end of an inning, it is USJ 2, Sacred Heart, nothing. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Now Chase Gardner has been staked to a 2 0 lead, and now, top of the second, he'll face his counterpart. Bryson Vance, the pitcher for Sacred Heart. Zach Wiley's Knights got one hit in the first inning. Vance would be followed by the left fielder, Wesley Lovelace, and the right fielder, Andre Bell. And Gardner delivers right down in there for strike one call. Boy, pitchers oftentimes work with so much more confidence when they get an early lead and they get ahead of the hitters more. And Chase, that one is fouled up. Let's see if it stays in play. Nope, it's going to be just out of the reach of both Max Kilburn and Maddox Rabin. But it's a no-ball, two-strike count to Vance. And Chase delivers as a high, lazy fly ball into center field. And getting under it and taking it is Wyatt Scott for out number one. Left fielder Wesley Lovelace coming up. No. 
Chase Gardner walked his first hitter and then settled down, managed to get a strikeout in the first inning, held them to one hit. And he's – that one's going right back to Chase, and he's going to chase the runner and flip to first for out number two. So score that one one to three. And he has retired four consecutive hitters, and here comes Andre Bell, the right fielder. The wine, good fastball in there on the corner for strike one. You can tell Gardner looks like he really got his stuff here this afternoon. Not taking a lot of time. Twain pitches, got him to go around on it. No balls and two strikes. The wind and the pitch. Almost went for it, but held off. One ball and two strikes to Bell. The second baseman, Garrett Dillon, would be next. And the pitch. A little bit down in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. The Sacred Heart team does not go very deep. They only have three reserves. And Gardner with the 2-2. And they got him around on that one for out number three. Second strikeout for Chase Gardner. And that was a quick inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. So your score at the end of an inning and a half, USJ 2, Sacred Heart, nothing. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's at the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options too with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's, for your life. Are you looking to build a career? Build a career with West Tennessee's own H&M Company. H&M is a leading coast-to-coast -coast industrial design and construction firm for Fortune 500 companies. Founded in Milan in 1957 and headquartered in Jackson, H&M is actively hiring in all areas of construction and engineering. Visit us at hmcompany.com to start building your career today. Remember, you can see all the action of Sacred Heart Athletics on the Worthy Road Studios YouTube page as well as the Ball Game Blitz and Worthy Road Studios Facebook pages. And if you miss part of the game, go there afterward and you can see it all in its entirety. Brooks Jones, the second baseman, stands in in the top of the second with the Bruins on top two to nothing, and he'll be facing Bryson Vance once again. The Bruins had seven men come to the plate in the first inning. Jones will be followed by Corbin Howard and Kurt Sammons. Nice change of pace on that one for strike one. As we say, just almost little to no humidity this afternoon. Very dry day. That one is tap foul down to... Oh, now we're going to have to talk to uh, Danny Giles about that one. Got away from him on the third baseline. Need to look at that one in slow motion after the game. The 0-2 pitch to Brooks. And got him looking on the inside corner for out number one. That is the second strikeout for Vance. And here's Corbin Howard, the third baseman. Corbin didn't get in in Saturday's game to the plate. And he went around on that one, and you could tell he was going for the downs. No balls and a strike. 
that wind's picking up again. It had calmed down for a couple of minutes, and now you're feeling it again coming out of the west. We'll check the speed after this half inning. Ball and a strike to Howard. And Vance goes to the wind and the pitch. And that one is in there. Two balls and one strike. Vance working relatively quickly. And that one is in there for a strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Corbin was taking that pitch all the way. So this is the one that he wants to be able to connect with. And they got him on a nice slider. And so that is out number two and third strikeout for Vance. And here comes Kurt Salmons. He struck out in the first inning. And the left fielder. He was one for four in Saturday's game. And the pitch, that was inside, but he went for it, and it just dipped on him. So it's no balls and a strike with two out and nobody on for the Bruins. And Vance delivers right down in there for strike two. Boy, he's finding the plate a lot easier in this inning. I guarantee you, Kurt wants one that he can tee off on. And he does. And foul. Just bent foul before it hit the first base bag. So we're still at no balls and two strikes. We should be able to get this one in before sunset this evening. And the pitch. Way high, ball one. Sunset scheduled about 7.33 tonight. And the wind and the pitch. Just did hold up on that one. And let's see. Now, there's a discussion here about where – and they're – well, they're going to send him down to first base. No, they say he's out. We are very confused because suddenly Kurt was headed down to first base and the home plate umpire asked for help from the first base umpire, and he said he went around on that. So Vance struck out the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. At the end of two, Bruins still on top, two to nothing. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. I shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Now, top of the third, Chase Gardner will face Garrett Dillon, the second baseman, and back up to the top of the order for Brody Wilson and Grant Dillon. And that's a hard hit ball going into center field, and so he's there with a base hit. That was one of those get-out-of-the-way <laughs> liners, and 
that got the attention of just about everybody in the stands. So Dillon is on with only the second hit of the afternoon for the Knights. And here is Brody Wilson, the shortstop. He walked his first time up. That one low down into the dirt. And he was tossed out at second base on a throw second baseman. That was one of those odd from the outfield because the Wilson had to wait at first base to see if the ball was going to be caught. It wasn't, but he didn't have enough of a lead, and so he was literally thrown out by the second baseman throwing to the shortstop from the outfield. Hard hit foul. That's going to be out of play. Two balls, one strikes. And our temperature has increased just a hair to 71 degrees, and that's what you like as the afternoon progresses. That's a high fly ball. Let's see if it stays in play, and they can't get to it. I think Max Kilburn lost it in the sun, and heading down from third base was Corbin Howard, but just couldn't get to it quickly enough. So it's just a pop-up strike, two balls and two strikes. That thing was bending in a rather wicked fashion, and I think Max just lost it in the sun. And here's your pitch, and he lines that one foul. He was going for that gap over in wide right field, but got it just a bit late, and so it is still two balls and two strikes to Brody Wilson with a runner on and nobody out in the pitch. That's high. He's gone full. Three balls, two strikes. Chase winds and pitches. And that one, again, another hard hit one. Nicely stopped by the coach down at third base. Had to show off a little bit of barehanded stab. All right, we're still at three and two. And here comes the payoff pitch. And just got a piece of it. And I think Wilson was happily surprised that he just got a slight bit of the aluminum on it. And we'll do the 3-2 again. And again, foul. That's four in a row now. But none of the old backyard or playground rules where you either said four fouls or six fouls or an out. I think they did that just to speed up the game whenever you were doing that at recess. All right. This is the fifth 3-2 pitch. And got him on the outside corner. And I think Wilson knew it. He was just hoping the ump would hold off on that one. So with one down now, and that is the third strikeout for Chase Gardner. It brings up the third baseman, Grant Dillon. He reached base on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Got that one in there for strike one. Malachi Chavis, the center fielder, would be next unless the Bruins pull off a double play here. And he goes for the bunt. This is going to be a hard play, firing hard to first. Digs it out of the ground and got him. He got the sacrifice. And that moves Dillon over to second. Excellent play at third because that was a tough play for Corbin Howard because that was a slow roller. Excellent bunt, but they got the man at first, and so he accomplished the mission of moving the runner to second. And the pitch is just outside for ball one to Chavis, the center fielder, with a runner now on second. 
He's getting his lead. And the pitch. And that's a hard hit ball, and that's probably going to score a run. Yeah, there's no way they're going to get him at the plate. And on the throw, taking second is Chavis. Give him a single, and then he took second on the throw. And so that brings in Garrett Dillon with the first run of the game for the night. So they've cut the lead to 2-1, to one, and here comes the first baseman, Jacob Hancock, who flied out to center field in his first appearance back in the first inning. So with a man on second, Gardner delivers to Hancock, and that one's up high, ball one. If he can keep him with a ground ball on this one and manage to get one at first, they'll take that or just a routine fly ball. And the pitch, that's in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Bruins will have the early part of their order up when they come in for the bottom of the third. And the pitch went around on that one. That was a nice dipping curve. Two balls and a strike. John Brooks, the catcher, would be next. And the 2 1. And a lazy fly ball. They're going to have to get under it, and they do. Shortstop takes it. Nice job by Clennon Harden backing up. And if you ever tried to do that going in reverse, I can tell you that was not easy. Well, they did manage to cut the lead in half, picking up one run on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. So your score at the end of two and a half, the Bruins two and the Knights one. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Are you looking to build a career? Build a career with West Tennessee's own H&M Company. H&M is a leading coast-to-coast -coast industrial design and construction firm for Fortune 500 companies. Founded in Milan in 1957 and headquartered in Jackson, H&M is actively hiring in all areas of construction and engineering. Visit us at hmcompany.com to start building your career today. Sager Dart with one run on three hits and one error, and the Bruins with two runs on two hits and no errors. And in this inning, Bryson Vance will face that great rock team of Hondo and the Kilburns. Max Kilburn will be up first. Had a single his first time up. He'll be followed by Nash and then by Hondo Wyatt Scott. Let's see if they can send six, seven, eight batters to the plate in this inning. And that one, that's a strike just on the inside corner. It also narrowly avoided hitting Max. He was hit by a pitch ball his first time up back in the first inning and came in to score with one of the two runs for the Bruins. And that one into the dirt, evening it up at one and one. The wind has not been a significant factor in any of the fly balls so far this afternoon. Big stretch, and that one's low, two balls and one strike.
And that one is low ball three. Three balls and a strike to Max Kilburn. And let's see if Max gets the green light, if he sees one that he likes here. And the pitch. And he does like it. And it stays inside fair. Well, no, the umpire said foul. It looked like it was right on the chalk. But the umpire says no, so it's just a long strike. Three balls and two strikes. I can tell you from our vantage point, it looked just like it had hit the chalk. It was nothing more than even a foot ruler difference. And the 3-2. Inside, ball four. And so Max is on base again. He's been on base twice without even an official at bat. And boy, does he fly down to first base even after a walk. And here comes Nash Kilburn, who singled his first time up. Nash seems to be always on base. If he hits five times, he's probably going to be on base three or four times. And Max is really threatening a steal. Having a little conversation with the first baseman. Ball and no strikes. Nash steps back in. And the pitch. And that one low and inside. Ball two. I would not be surprised to see Nash take a walk down to second on this one if he likes... And, yeah, (laughs) I know what he was thinking, and Vance stepped off the rubber. Here's the 2-0. Outside, ball three. So three balls and no strikes, and we're one pitch away from the Kilburns again, starting a rally. And here's the wine on the 3-0, throw back to first, but he was already back there before he actually released the ball. The Bruins have had two hit batsmen and a walk. And he walked him on four pitches. So after striking out the side in the second, Vance has a little bit of wildness in this inning. And so Max goes down to second, and Nash is on first. And here's Hondo. He had an RBI fielder's choice in the first inning and came in to score a run. And he's going for a bunt, and it's beautifully laid down right in front of the pitcher. And he throws, and the first baseman was not there. So give him a, an infield hit. First baseman just did not find the bag at all. So they are loaded with nobody out, and here comes Clinton Harden, who was hit by a pitch. Back in the first inning, and nowhere to put him. That's inside for ball one. Jackson Sills will be next. So the Bruins have got something going here in the third. And stepping out again, Harden felt like Vance took a little bit too much time delivering his next pitch. And here it comes. And he had to duck away from that one. Two balls and no strikes. Vance has been getting a lot of pitches up in this inning. Two walks and a single for the Bruins. And time called. And a balk. You don't see that often in high school ball, but... The runners all advance, and Max Kilburn comes in on the ball. Nash goes to third, and Wyatt Scott to second. 
And swing and a miss. Two balls and a strike. But you got both the runners in scoring position now. Nobody out, and it's a three-to-one game now. Bruins get back the run they gave away in the top half of the third, and that one is well out of play. So it is two balls and two strikes. Nobody out. And Harden awaits the 2-2. And he went around on it. That one was a floater that got him swinging. And that is the fifth strikeout of the game for Vance. And here comes Jackson Sills, who singled his first time up. This would be a perfect time for that once again. Because a single would likely bring in both of these guys on the bases. And the wind and the pitch, and that one's low. A ball and no strikes. Maddox Rabin would be next. Vance gets ready, working from the stretch. And that one's high. Two balls and no strikes. He's had some success out there with five strikeouts in the game, but he's also hit three players, and he has walked two. Three balls and no strikes. And he's got to be thinking it, it has to be working in his head after he committed that balk because that works on a pitcher's mind like you just can't believe once they get one called. And the pitch in the dirt for ball four. And so we are jammed again. And Maddox Rabin with everybody on base. Maddox hit into a fielder's choice his first time up. And let's see if he can deliver one with one out. And Zach Wiley is coming out to talk to his pitcher. And they're talking situations right here because he has thrown a lot of pitches in this game despite the fact that we are in the third inning. Uh, these pitchers are on account of 120 pitches. He's not close to that yet, but he's somewhere a little bit more than halfway there. And they're going to leave him in. And he's talking things over with his catcher, John Brooks. And Brooks heads back to the plate. And Maddox awaits his opportunity. And Brooks Jones will be on deck. Boy, Maddox has a lot of room, particularly in right center field. And that's low for a ball. He's just lost his control a bit in this inning, has Vance. The wind and the 1-0. And a high fly ball to center field. That'll score a run. Center fielder is under it and easily moving in to score is Nash Kilburn with the sacrifice fly, and so Maddox does his job flying out to center field, but now giving the Bruins a 4-1 to lead. Two down now with runners on first and second, and Brooks Jones, who was caught looking in the second inning, is back up for his second trip to the plate. And the pitch, and just caught the corner. No balls and one strike. He is the seventh Bruin to hit in this inning. And the line, that goes down into the dirt, and they are going to advance. Catcher couldn't dig it out, so that takes away a force play. So the pass ball moves Scott to third and Sills 
over to second. And Brooks has a 1-1 count. And the pitch. And that one fouled out of play. A good distance behind our press box. Ball and two strikes, two out, and two on for the Bruins. And Brooks is going to step out and quickly step right back in. Vance delivers. And tap foul. Just off the catcher's mitt. And wherever that hit, I can tell you, it probably smarted, as they would say. So we'll do it all again. We are in the third here at Overton Stadium, as I've said all season long. One of the most beautiful fields for high school baseball anywhere in the state of Tennessee. Here's your one-two pitch. And got him on the corner for out number three. But the Bruins managed to do a little damage. They had two runs on one hit. And there were three walks in the game in that inning. No errors. And they had two men left on base. So at the end of three, it is USJ four, Sacred Heart one. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime. And that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. Tired of going to the dealerships only to see empty spaces? Then come to Carlock Nissan of Jackson. We have over 60 new vehicles in stock and more coming in daily. You can see, feel, and of course smell that new car smell. Save up to $8,600 off MSRP on a new Nissan. Plus, special APR financing as low as 1.9%. It's all at Carlock Nissan of Jackson. You should already be here. Chase Gardner has been staked to his largest lead of the game at 4-1. to one. And here in the top of the fourth, he'll face the catcher, John Brooks, the pitcher, Bryson Vance, and the left fielder, Wesley Loveless. Brooks struck out in the first inning. And just missed the corner, ball and no strikes. He's done a good job of scattering the three hits of the Knights. And the pitch went around on that one. Good fastball. One ball, one strike. And the pitch hit that inside corner. One ball and two strikes. He did, uh, he did a good job in the third inning of getting out of a mild jam that could have been worse than it was and holding them to a single run. And the one, two. And that one is lined to the second baseman. Good job of backing up on that one by Brooks Jones. Had to trot back about five steps, but managed to get under it. That's one of those that can really fool you if it's going from the infield into the short outfield. But he nailed it. And so with one out, here comes Bryson Vance, the pitcher. And the wind of Vance, and he hits that one out of play. No balls and a strike. And if you haven't been outside today in West Tennessee, you have missed something because it is just spectacular. That one a little bit high, ball and a strike. And after we've had some of these selected days in the last four weeks where we were facing impending severe weather, you value any one of these that you can get. That one right down the middle for a strike two. Ball and two strikes to Vance. He flied out to center field. His 
First time up back in the second. And here comes the one-two from Gardner. And had a change of pace that got him for strike three. So another strikeout, and that is number four of the game for Chase Gardner. And here comes Wesley Loveless, the left fielder. He grounded out pitcher to first base his first time up. And that one finding the same spot. As I said, his last inning, he's got his stuff this afternoon. He's hitting the corners well. He's got a good fastball, change of pace. That one just a little bit high, ball and a strike. And two down with nobody on. He managed to get a three up and three down in the second. Let's see if he can give us a Xerox copy. And that one just sliced foul, picked up by Maddox Raven. So he got one ball and two strikes, and I think he's asking for a different bat. So Loveless heads back. Got some new aluminum out there, and here we go. Andre Bell, the right fielder, would be next if Loveless were to get on. Bruins with a 4-1 to one lead, and Gardner doing a good job here. And that one got away. He'll throw on to first, and it's too high. That one just simply got out of Max's hands too hard. Now, let's see. They are uh, the, the up. So that is going to bring in Andre Bell. So score at a strikeout. That's the fifth strikeout, but he reaches first on the error on Max Kilburn. All right, no balls and a strike. And that one is, and Max looks the runner back to first. Ball and a strike. The Knights still with a run on three hits. And you've got Loveless on first on the air. And there's a strike, a ball and two strikes with two outs. Bell struck out in the second inning. And the pitch. Runner going, and Max can't dig it out. So he makes it to second. That's an odd thing when you strike out, but yet you're on base down to second when they couldn't achieve the force out of the tag. And the pitch. And that is a liner that is going to be taken by the shortstop, Clennon Harden. Timed his jump perfectly and was on the move and took it for out number three. So there were no runs, uh, no hits, one error, and one man left on base. And at the end of three and a half, we're halfway through, and the Bruins still on top four to one. Mention Ball Game Blitz Sports Network and receive a free gift. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime. And that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. (laughs) 
Now, you know you love that seafood that you just saw from Red Hook. And if you go by there and you mention the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network, they'll give you a free gift. And I don't know about you, but I love a free gift no matter where it is. And just like the one that Corbin Howard just have, a free gift down to first base, being hit by a pitch ball. But be sure and do that. Go by Red Hook and enjoy the seafood and tell them that you heard about it on the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network and get the free gift. And here comes Kurt Sammons up at the top of the order with a man already on. And Kurt's going to bunt. They're not going to be able to get him at second, but they fire on to first. And he's going to try to get it to third, and he got in there in time. Excellent job of base running by Corbin Howard to get all the way to third on the sacrifice. So Kurt gets the sacrifice. And Max Kilburn, who has been on base with a hit-by-pitch ball and with a walk, he scored twice the first time. He scored on a single and then the second time on a balk. So Max doesn't have an official plate appearance today. And that one a little bit low for ball one. And he's got Corbin Howard down there on third. Terrific job of base running by Corbin. He was really alert and saw an opening, and he just didn't waste any time when he rounded second. You don't see a sacrifice get a runner from first to third very often, but you just did. And that one low down into the dirt. Two balls and no strikes with an out. Nash Kilburn will be next. And the wine and the pitch. And there's a drive. That's a fly ball that is going to be snagged by the left fielder, but that is going to bring in another run. And Corbin Howard scores on the sacrifice fly. So Max makes it a 5-1 to one game with that sacrifice fly. That means he still doesn't have an official at bat in the game. But he scored twice and... Has delivered an RBI, and here comes with the bases clear, Nash Kilburn. Nash singled in the first inning, and he walked and scored in the third. And that's a ball. So the Bruins are just packaging small increments in most of the innings here, and that one got away, and <clears throat> two balls and no strikes. Hondo Wyatt Scott would be next. And here comes the 2-0 to Nash. And that's a high fly ball. Let's see if it stays in. It is going to stay in play, and it is fair. And <laughs> Nash was already about a quarter of the way down to second base. So he gets an infield hit. That is really, really tough. The sun is at a point. It's not straight overhead, but you're at a point in the late afternoon where some of these shadows can play havoc with it. And I think that may well have happened because you're seeing the shadow getting almost parallel to the third base line. So here comes Hondo Scott. And no question that Nash was going to make second on that one, despite the fact that it was a wild pitch anyway. I believe he would have stolen it regardless. So, Bruins now with five runs on four hits. And let's see if Wyatt, who has singled and hit into a fielder's choice, and he scored a run. Let's see if he can deliver. And here's the pitch. And he went around on that one. He was looking for the fence. A ball and a strike. And Clinton Harden would be next. And 
and the pitch. And hit the corner, a ball and two strikes. And I just imagine Nash Kilburn is going to be moving with this next pitch. The one-two from Vance. And that one is going off the third baseman's glove, and that is a base hit. So that moves Nash Kilburn over to third. And you may wonder, okay, what's the decision when it comes to whether that's a hit or an error? That was a tough play for the third baseman, and he had it, it had every indication that that ball was going into left field, and basically his movement, all it did was stop it from getting out of the infield. And the runner is taking off to second and will not be challenged, and so Hondo has made it in with a stolen base. And for the Bruins, that is their third stolen base of the afternoon. No balls and a strike to Clinton Harden. He reached base on a hit batsman and went after one that went down in the dirt. No balls and two strike. He was hit by a pitch ball, and he struck out in the third. But the Bruins have packaged together another bunch here and have added to the lead, and they would love to be able to see one go into the short outfield and get two more in. And just missed it and got the inside corner for strike three. And that is the seventh strikeout for Vance. But the Bruins picked up another run on two hits. No errors, and two men left on base. So the score at the end of four, it is USJ 5, Sacred Heart 1. Car like Prestige is not your typical used car dealer. We have everything from a Porsche to a, well, to this and this, and lots more. We inspect and repair all our vehicles. Ask us to prove it, we will. Car Lock Prestige, Van Drive, Jackson. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. Fleet Feet, your locally owned source for the best shoes for school, work, running, and everyday comfort. They offer a 3D scan of your feet and professional fitting. Fleet Feet sells the top selling brands, Hoka, OnCloud, and Brooks. To add comfort to your spikes or other performance shoes, let Fleet Feet fit you for a pair of arch support inserts. Get the quality you want and the service you deserve at Fleet Feet in Jackson on Oil Well Road beside Walgreens. We've been at it an hour and nine minutes, and we are now in the top of the fifth, and Garrett Dillon, the second baseman, showed bunt, but he took a strike. He singled and scored in the third inning, and he scored the only run that the Knights have been able to put together. And there is a fly ball. Let's see if it's going to stay in play, and they couldn't get to it. You had three guys chasing after that, and nobody could come up with it. And I think Nash Kilburn lost his cap out there on right field chasing that one. So they'll take the slow trudge back to where they were, but it's no balls and two strikes. Dillon will be followed again by the top of the order, Brody Wilson and Grant Dillon. And the pitch by Gardner. Just missed the corner. One ball and two strikes. He's held them down on three hits this afternoon. And the wine and the pitch. And got him on a sinker. And that's strikeout number six for Chase Gardner, and that brings up Brody Wilson. He walked in the first inning and struck out looking in the third. So 
So Chase has really delivered a game today. Outside, ball one. Six strikeouts and only one walk today. And the pitch. And hard hit ball between the third baseman and the shortstop into left field for a base hit. Only the fourth hit of this afternoon for the Knights. And that will bring in Grant Dillon, the third baseman. He had a sacrifice in the third, and back in the first inning, he reached base on a fielder's choice. And Malachi Chavis, the center fielder, would be up unless the Bruins can navigate a double play. And that one is right there, to, And he's going to go to second and see if they could get him there. He got in ahead of the tag. And that was that smarted just a little bit, but I think Clinton Harden's okay. He's walking it off. So that was a perfect unassisted out for Maddox Rabin. And moving down to second is Brody Wilson on the fielder's choice. Here comes Malachi Chavis. He has singled twice and has an RBI. He brought in the only run that the Knights have scored today. And that's high for a ball. Gardner delivers. And there's a fly ball to center field, and the center fielder chasing underneath it and gets it one-handed for out number three. Nice running catch by Wyatt Scott. So they managed to get a man on, but no damage done. It was no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. So the score remains at the end of four and a half innings. It is the Knights 1 and the Bruins 5. At Dynamics Physical Therapy, we help our clients get back to doing what they love. Dynamics is now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. Bryson Vance has not pitched a bad game for Sacred Heart. He has held the Bruins to five hits, but, and he's also struck out seven, but he has hit three batters and he has committed three walks, and that is really what did a lot of damage in both the first and third innings when the Bruins picked up two runs in each of those. Bruins five runs on five hits, but they have managed to capitalize on some of the pitching mistakes that have put runners on. And he'll face Jackson Sills, Maddox Rabin, and Brooks Jones in this inning. Sills has singled and walked. And we're ready for the bottom half of the fifth. And Bruins have been in control since the first inning where they picked up two. Vance with the pitch. Good-looking one on the inside corner. He has an impressive delivery. No balls and a strike. And the wind and the pitch. Way outside, ball one. Ball and a strike. We want to thank all of our fine sponsors who support USJ Bruins basketball. We thank you, and we also hope you will go by and thank 
all of our sponsors for bringing you these games on the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network. Did I say basketball? I did. When you have a veteran basketball announcer and I'm switching sports, it's hard for me to stay on top of that. That's, that's my di- director, Paul. That, that's my director, Paul Schultze here, who has to remind me from time to time if I let basketball slip in. Here you go, and that one is going to the shortstop. He fires on to first, and he digs it out for out number one, going six to three. And that brings up the first baseman, Maddox Rabin. He hit into a fielder's choice in the first inning and brought in a run with a sacrifice fly in the third. So Maddox officially 0 for 1 today. Paul, I promise to try to avoid saying a different sport as we continue on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Paul, Paul and I are oftentimes seated in the same position during basketball season, and it's hard for that to get out of my system. Whether it's USJ or Union University. And the pitch. Just nearly missed, nicking him on the shoulder. Two balls, no strikes to Maddox. Brooks Jones would be next. And the 2-0. And that one dipped inside to the corner. Two balls and one strike. Maddox has got good power. If he gets one that he could really unleash on. Way out of the way and all the way back to the wall. Three balls and one strike. And Maddox will have the green light if he sees a pitch he likes here. So let's see what Vance brings to the table this time. And the pitch. High ball four. And so Maddox has reached base with a walk. Brooks Jones, the second baseman. He has been caught looking twice. We have a pitch hitter instead of Brooks Jones. We have Aubrey Sellers coming in to pinch hit. So he's got Maddox Rabin on first and the pitch. Maddox got a pretty good lead there, but decided not to chance it. It's a ball for a 1-0 count. And Corbin Howard would be next. We got one out and one on, and he tapped that one foul. Ball and a strike. Bruins looking for any kind of insurance runs that they can possibly commandeer here in the fifth. And that one hit him. That one just got way inside, so Aubrey is on, being hit by a pitch ball, and that moves Maddox Rabin over to second. Corbin Howard. He is 0 for 1 today. He struck out in the second, and he was hit by a pitch ball. He's one of four that have been hit by pitch balls today. That was back in the fourth. And he takes a ball, and he's got runners on first and second. And here's the pitch. And that one is sliced out of play. Bounced off of the grill over by the concession area. A ball and a strike, and and they're going to send a pinch rudder in. Actually, they're going to bring Brooks Jones back in to pinch uh, pinch run, technically. <laughs> Sellers was the pinch hitter for Jones, and now Brooks is back in to run. 
And that one is a high, lazy fly ball to right field, and they get under it. But the second baseman is going to move over to third. So the runner on second goes to third on the sacrifice fly. So Corbin is not charged with an at-bat because he was able to move the runner over to third. So that is... He's still officially just 0 for 1 on the day, and here comes Kurt Salmons. Kurt has struck out twice, and he reached base on a sacrifice. He's 0 for 2 on the day, and the runner's going to second, and they're not going to throw. That's one reason for bringing Brooks Jones back in, because he – is so very fast down on the base pass. So now they have them both in scoring position. An 0-1 count with two out here in the fifth. And he delivers, and that hits him, and we've got the bases loaded. That is the sixth man to be hit by a pitch ball today. And they're going to come out, and this may be all for Bryson Vance. This is the second visit to the mound. And he has lost a lot of his control in this inning because he has hit two men and has walked another. And so far in the game, he has walked four and hit six. And Max Kilburn is awaiting whatever the decision is. And the umpire is going over to talk it over. They're going to leave him in. As we mentioned, they just don't have a lot of bench strength. There's only three subs available on this Sacred Heart team. So for Max Kilburn, who doesn't have an official at bat, he's been hit by a pitch. He has... Walked, he has scored twice. He delivered a sacrifice fly to bring in a run. And the pitch. That's low and away for ball one. Well, when you get them loaded, even with two out, you want to be able to get at least one or two of them in. And the stretch and the pitch. And he faked a throw back to first. That was in there for a strike. A ball and a strike. Nash Kilburn would be next. Nash is two for two, and he has walked. And the wind and the pitch. And he took a look at that one. One ball and two strikes to Max Kilburn. So the catcher stands back in. And let's see if he can get a piece of one. And the pitch. And that one goes into the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Runners go back. Max is the sixth Bruin to hit in this inning. And the pitch. High, ball three, so we've gone full and no place to put him. Three balls and two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Bruins on top, five to one, trying to add to this lead that they've had since the very first inning. Vance winds and delivers. The runners are moving, and that one is a high fly ball, and the right fielder is coming in and takes it for out number three. Well, the Bruins had a genuine threat but couldn't deliver off of it. It was no runs on no hits. They had two hit batsmen and a walk, no errors, and three men left on base. And so at the end of five, it remains the Bruins five and Sacred Heart one. Are you looking to build a career? Build a career with West Tennessee's own H&M Company. H&M is a leading coast-to-coast industrial design and construction firm for Fortune 500 companies. 
founded in Milan in 1957 and headquartered in Jackson, H&M is actively hiring in all areas of construction and engineering. Visit us at hmcompany.com to start building your career today. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. Our temperature is 69 degrees here in the Hub City as we are getting close to the 6 o'clock hour. We've been at it for an hour and 26 minutes. And the Bruins on top 5-1 to one in a very workmanlike game. They would have loved to have been able to get one of those three guys in in the last inning. But regardless, they're holding very steady to that lead. Chase Gardner has pitched a steady game, scattering four hits. And he has struck out six. And this inning, he is going to face Jacob Hancock, the first baseman, John Brooks, the catcher, and his counterpart, Bryson Vance, the pitcher. Hancock has flied out to center field and shortstop. Got it right down in there for strike one call. And the 0-1, that gets away from Max. So we go 1-1. That wind is still blowing out pretty steady to right field, but it hasn't really increased much today. A little bit low, two balls and a strike. Still blowing about 10 to 11 miles an hour. And the pitch. And that one is going to be sliced into right field for a base hit. So Hancock gets on for the first time this afternoon. John Brooks, the catcher, coming in. He struck out in the first inning and flied out to the second baseman in the fourth. That's only the fifth hit of the afternoon for the Knights, but they haven't really been able to bunch them together. And that one fouled back out of play. No balls and a strike. Let's see if Garner can add to his strikeout total. Six today so far, and that one's outside. Max faked a throw to first. Ball and a strike. We're in the top half of the sixth, and it's a fly ball, and let's see. Maddox gives chase, but it is out of his range. Goes back over near the facilities. So it's just a long foul strike, one ball and two strikes. Fans look very comfortable in the stands this afternoon. I haven't seen anybody pull out any blankets. And one around on it for strike three, the seventh strikeout of the afternoon. And Chase Gardner has just been tremendous. If a base runner gets on, he just usually manages to come right back with a strikeout or gets him on a ground ball. And here comes Vance, the pitcher. He has struck out and flied out. He has Hancock down at first. And Gardner waits and delivers. A little bit low. Ball on a strike with one out. Bruins will have Nash Kilburn up first in their half of the sixth inning. And 
He's been on base every time he's been up. And that one nicely done. That may hit the roof of our building. And here we go. There we go right here. Here we go. <laughs> Get the net out, Ernie. <laughs> there we go. No, it didn't even break anything. It didn't hit one of Paul's cameras, but the ball just bounced right back on top of us. And just it, it took a bounce and went right back in the window, and, and so we had our first souvenir of the seasons. Two balls and two strikes. I'll tell my grandchildren about that. And the 2-2. Two -two. As a high fly ball into lazy center field, but getting back there is the shortstop, and Clennon Harden puts that one away for out number two. I can remember all those years when Milo Hamilton was doing the Atlanta Braves games with Ernie Johnson Sr., and if one came back toward their booth, it was always, get the net out, Ernie. We didn't even see that one coming. I, I need to bring a net here from now on. <laughs> but it didn't hit one piece of the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network equipment. That was amazing. Right down in there for a strike one, a ball and a strike. Two down. Wesley Loveless, the left fielder has grounded out, and he has struck out. And that one's fouled out of play. A ball and two strikes. He has only allowed one runner to get past second base. Just a bit low. Two balls and two strikes. And the wine and the pitch. And that one is going to, it is snag for out number three, a diving catch by Wyatt Hondo Scott. He lunged about as far as his body would allow him to and snagged it for out number three. So some excellent fielding plays in that inning as well as the seventh strikeout for Chase Gardner, it was no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. And so we go to the bottom half of the sixth, and the score is the Bruins five, the Knights one. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. King Jewelers is not your typical run-of-the-mill jewelry store. Grover is a certified jeweler with 35 years experience. This isn't just a jewelry store. It's an iconic symbol of love. How far would you go for love? King Jewelers 16B Conrad Drive, Jackson. Well, Nash Kilburn will lead off the sixth inning and Bryson Vance stays in. He's trailing five to one. And Nash has had his usual dependable afternoon. He's had two singles and a walk, and he scored a run. Came in on a sacrifice fly in the third. And let's see if he can get another insurance run effort started here in the sixth and then set it all up to wind it up for Gardner that one's a high chop and the second baseman's not going to pick that up 
So Max has been on, uh, Nash has been on every time that he has been up to the plate today. And that's hit number six. And here comes Hondo Scott, and he's had a good afternoon. He's been on base on a fielder's choice. He has singled twice, and he has scored. He's had an RBI. And he's got Nash down at first. That one's high. Nash faked a uh, possible steal. And the wine from Vance and the pitch. And that gets away from the catcher, and that is going to send Nash down into scoring position with a wild pitch. So let's see if Hondo can pull a third single of the afternoon and bring in Nash. This guy, if he gets one of the outfield and has got any depth to it, it's a base hit. I can tell you Nash will be home. And that one is going to bend, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. I don't think Nash can come in on that because he had to wait too long to see if it was going to be caught, but he does move over to third. And Wyatt gets his third consecutive single of the game. And that brings up Clennon Harden. He was hit by a pitch ball in the first inning, and he struck out twice. Nolan Foster is coming in to pinch hit. Of course, we saw him pitch on Saturday, so Nolan is in to pinch hit for Harden. They've got him on first and third with nobody out. And the pitch, that one was sliced back to the screen. No balls and a strike. Jackson Sills and Maddox Raven would be next. And the pitch, that one's inside for ball one. So one ball, one strike. Don't be surprised if Hondo takes off for second anytime soon. And he's got a pretty good lead. And the pitch. Low for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Getting more shadows here in the infield. And that one's right down in there. Nice curve. Two balls and two strikes. Bruins now with five runs on seven hits. And the pitch, and hit him. That is the seventh hit batsman in the game. So Scott moves over to second, and they are loaded with nobody out, and this is the third conference on the mound, and I believe that is going to be all for Vance. And so we got a call for the bullpen, and we'll be back to tell you who the new pitcher is right after this. Ready for spring cleaning? Don't forget your HVAC system. Somebody needs to clean out all that dust and grime, and that somebody is us. Let McCoy's Heating and Air professionally clean your system so cool air can flow where it needs to go. Schedule now, and you can get your cleaning for only $90. Call McCoy's Heating and Air at 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again for fast reliable collision repair trust the experts at mitchell's body shop and get back out there
The new pitcher for Sacred Heart is Claude Henrion, and you can close the book on Vance. He went five full innings and gave up five runs on seven hits. He walked six and hit seven. And he leaves with the bases loaded, and Henrion is facing a huge jam because the Bruins have nobody out. Jackson Sills, who has walked and singled, he's officially one for two today. Grounded out his last time up, and they're going to come out and talk to Henrion. And as we said right before we took the break, the shadows are now beginning to, with the sun dipping a little bit further into the western sky, it is beginning to cover about a third of the infield area. Pretty soon it's going to be over there giving him a problem. If we don't, if this game goes extraordinarily longer, it may be a problem there at the pitcher's mound. So the first pitch from Henry, and he got him to go around on that one. I mean, he was going for the fence. No balls and a strike. Jackson with three on, and the pitch. And that one's fouled out of play. So quickly, 0-2. Harden's on first, Scott's on second, Nash Kilburn is on third. And the 0-2. And that one's tapped. It's going to be a one-hopper, and he chooses not to go home with it, goes to first, and that was really probably the only sensible play that he had. It's 4-3, to three, but gives Sills an RBI on that one as it brings in Nash Kilburn on the fielder's choice. Scott is on second, and Harden – Scott is on third, and Harden goes to second, and that brings up Maddox Rabin with runners both in scoring position. 6-1 lead now for the Bruins, and that one dips low for a ball. And Rory Jones is over, getting ready to pinch hit. And that one's outside for ball two. So 2-0 two oh with one out and two on for the Bruins. Trying to see if they can break this one wide open in the sixth. And the wind and the pitch. Outside ball three. They can put him on first and load him up again for Rory Jones. And here comes the 3-0 pitch. Way high, ball four. So Maddox walks for the second straight time, and Rory Jones will stand in to pinch it. So Rory has the bases loaded with one out as he faces Henrion. Danny Giles is approaching, send a message to the umpire, probably just letting him know of the lineup change. Bases full, one out. And the pitch to Rory. Right down in there for strike one call. No balls and a strike. Bruins up 6-1. to one. They've led all the way. And the pitch. Oh, he went around on that one, and he was looking for pay dirt. And it just didn't connect. No balls and two strikes. Corbin Howard would be next. And tapped it foul. Just got a piece of it.
Rory has been a relief pitcher this year as well. So they'll rewind the tape again as we go with another 0-2 with the runners on base going with this next pitch. And here it comes. And they got him on a high fastball. That's the first strikeout of the game for Henrion. And now here comes Corbin Howard, still with the bases loaded. Corbin was hit by a pitch ball in the fourth and scored. He has struck out, and he had a sacrifice fly. And that was low, one ball and no strikes. He's the seventh Bruin to hit in this inning. And the wind and the pitch. High, ball two. There is nowhere to put him. And he awaits the 2-0. In there for strike one. So we've gone 2-1. Bruins have had so many base runners today that haven't had hits. And that one is a one-hopper to the second baseman, and he just walks over, and that goes to the shortstop, and he walks over and touches second for out number three. So that's six unassisted. So the Bruins leave three on base. They had one run, and they had two hits. They had a hit batsman and a walk, no errors, and three men left on base. So we have completed six, and we got a hold them Bruins. Your score is USJ 6, Sacred Heart 1. We offer live webcasting for families. It kind of came out of when so many warriors were going overseas to war. We have learned to offer families more choices that we want to serve our families well and serve our families better. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Andre Bell stands in as Chase Gardner tries to go all the way with a complete game. And actually, that is, that is Henry and the pitcher who is hitting, who came in relief in the previous inning. And one after another one, no balls and two strikes. So Gardner is working very quickly. He has struck out seven today, and he has only walked one. And the pitch. And that's a high drive, but the center fielder is going to be underneath it. And that is out number one. That'll bring up Garrett Dillon, the second baseman, who has singled and scored. In fact, he scored the only run. He struck out in the fifth. And I tell you what, he is still throwing hard here in the seventh. Two more outs, and he can put this one in the bank. The 1-0, and he got him to go around on that one ball, one strike. The 1-1 coming. High fly ball. Let's see if it stays in play. Well, not quite. Max gave a good chase to it, went all the way to the screen, but it just did get over the net. So it's one ball and two strikes. And 
And here we go. The one, two. And that one's a slow roller to the shortstop. He's going to fire on to first, and Maddox snags it for out number two. And so the last hope for the Knights will be the leadoff hitter, Brody Wilson, the shortstop. He has walked, singled, and struck out. And this would be for a complete game for Chase Gardner. The wind and the pitch. High fly ball to center field. He's giving chase to it. And it's over his head and it goes back to the wall. This is going to be for at least two, and I think he's going to make it to three. They throw it into third, and he is in there sliding with a triple. And he almost overslid the bag, and he's hurt. If nothing else, he's stinging a little bit because as he slid, you could feel that uh, his backside really hit the plate. I think he's okay. So he's in there with a triple. He got a hold of one. And that brings up Grant Dillon, the third baseman who has hit into a fielder's choice, had a sacrifice, and grounded out. So he is 0 for 2 today with a runner on third. And that one inside, ball one. The pitch by Gardner. Got him to go around on that one. One ball and one strike. This has been really good to see Chase have a solid outing today. They pitched him about 28 pitches on Saturday, and he had some wildness. But today, that's going to be one that is going to go up the middle. They're going to try to get him at first. He had the stretch, and he's out of there for game, set, and match. What a play by the infield to end that one and a great stretch by Maddox Rabin to just get him by a step. And so the Bruins have put it all away in the bank now. Your final score is USJ 6 and Sacred Heart 1, and we'll be back with the totals right after these messages. Dynamics Physical Therapy, your elite provider in sports medicine and performance. Now serving communities throughout West Tennessee. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Well, the Bruins may have only had seven hits today, but they had 20 base runners. And that's because of. The pitching from Sacred Heart ended up with six walks and seven batters hit by pitches. And when you have that happen and you bunch them together, that's usually going to spell a bad afternoon, and that's what happened for the Knights because uh, you can't allow 20 base runners to get on and uh, expect to have any great success with that. And the Bruins, even though they left 11 runners on base, Managed to bunch them together well enough to get the 6-1 to one victory. And you had a lot of people contributing to it. Wyatt Scott had three singles in the game. Nash Kilburn had three singles. And uh, Max, Max Kilburn contributed a sacrifice fly to bring in a run, and he scored twice. And you look across the board and see how many people also were hit by, I mean, it was like uh, they were being plunked all over the place today. Jackson Sills had a hit and a walk, had an RBI. 
And so across the board, Maddox Raymond with a couple of walks and a sacrifice fly to bring in a run. Uh, it was just a good afternoon in a steady, what you would call a workmanlike performance for Danny Giles Bruins. And they won it with six runs, seven hits, and no errors, and one run, six hits on one error for Sacred Heart. And we're going to give our player of the game recognition today to the man who was on the mound for the Bruins because he scattered six hits. He struck out seven and only walked one. And I refer to the man who is Chase Gardner. And it was a complete game as he went all the way and never really got into serious trouble. In the first inning, he gave up a hit and a walk and then managed to get out of that very quickly with a strikeout. And so he certainly deserves this on Senior Appreciation Day, and he's one of those seniors. We are very proud to give him our Player of the Game honor from the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network. Now, we'll be back with you again tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock for USJ Softball. So we hope you'll be joining us for that. We'll have some fun across the board and see how the girls manage to navigate the waters on the softball field. But it's been a happy afternoon for the Bruins and their fans as they win 6-1 to one over Sacred Heart. And so, the executive producer of the Ball Game Blitz Sports Network, powered by Worthy Road Studios, is Paul Schultze, who is also my director today. And on camera, Eric Inman. And I'm Steve Beverly saying so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee. The Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. With over 750,000 views in 2022, we are where you need to advertise. Please subscribe to our Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel and join the other 4,000 subscribers watching local sports, including Union University, USJ, TCA, Jackson Christian, and Peabody. Our multi-camera broadcasts include slow motion instant replay, on-screen scoreboard and graphics, and professional announcers. Thanks to our sponsors who make it all possible. Ball Game Blitz Sports Network by Worthy Road Studios. The premier sports broadcast network in West Tennessee. Thank <laughs> you.